I'm just looking at some uh, anamorphic footage from my well, it's a Singer 16D uh, lens attachment. And uh, I'm just going over the aspect ratio. It's a two to one, but I noticed that the lens isn't a perfect uh, two to one. It does do it. Maybe it's a 5% more. Well, not maybe. I figured it out it's 5% more squished down once it's um, brought into two to one. So I have to sort of bring the... The, the vertical resolution up by 5% to get things to look uh, like a circle, like a circle. Basically, that's the test I'm doing. So I tested with uh, diopters and without diopters to get the uh, ratio correct that it fits inside of a, a perfect circle uh, instead of sort of squished down like the original. Um, it comes out as a slight oval if uh, I do the two to one um, um, setting in Premiere Pro. So basically, let's see if I have any footage that's, I'll just right click on it, modify, uh, interpret footage, and right now that's square. So that, that one should pop up square. Yeah. So that's, uh, I'm filming on a GH5, uh, 4.3 ratio. Uh, with the two to one. So everything is, is stretched out uh, when you play it back normally. I don't know if I have it set up here. This one's overexposed. I got the exposure right in the next one. But I'll just use this as an example. So then you can interpret the footage uh, because it was shot not square pixel, but anamorphic two to one. And that brings it in, but you can see it's brought down a little bit too much is too oval. So when I bring it over to my timeline, uh, I just created a circle in Photoshop, a perfect circle to just uh, go over top to test this. And if we look at the effects controls, here I'll bring it to uniform. So just reset everything. Okay, so when I bring it in, the first thing I do is I set it to the, my frame size. Now, my sequence settings uh, for 4K uh, UHD is 3840 by 1600. This gives uh, a 240 aspect ratio, 239. It's not quite 239, it's, it's actually 240. Um, it's about 16 pixels difference there, but you can see here that there's still some black bars. So just by taking the uniform scale off, I'll just bring that back to 57, well, basically 58. We'll lose some horizontal resolution, but um, bring this back into a circle. It's actually, I think it's 60, 61. Now, if I go back to this one, I just want to double check. So yeah, that's it. So you'll see that it's it's 61, but it's still not reaching my uh, 240. This aspect ratio is like 253, which is not a not is non-standard. So to bring this up, I still have to zoom in a bit more, which I'm just going to check that. So I brought this one up to. It's a 5% difference between these two, so you have to do some math, uh, which I did. It's just basically take whatever your bottom one times it by. 0 0.05 and then add it to your your top one or vice versa and 64.1 so that brings it up to the top now you want to make sure there's not even one black bar there at the side or the top so so let's just make sure we don't have um, any black lines near the top which we don't or at the bottom Okay, so there we go. Um, so yeah, so that's the 
the aspect ratio I'm going to be using for my footage uh, basically it works out to be uh, the height is 64.1 and my scale width is 61 and that that way I don't lose very much resolution along the sides and people if I can find a person in here near the beginning. Here we go. So people look uh, using this ratio somewhat normal, like the 61 to 64. They don't look too squished or too uh, extended. All right, so that's sort of how I get going with my anamorphic footage with my 16D. Some nice flares with it. A lot of this is shot at 1600 ISO. So it's a bit grainy, but uh, anyway, I'm very happy with this lens. So hopefully that helps you out uh, with some of the cinema aspect ratios. Because not all these lenses are perfectly two to one, but uh, they're pretty close within very small tolerances. Like mine is 5%. I need to stretch it back out again after I conform it. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to stop there for now. Thanks for watching.